Adidas has finally claimed to have solved one of the biggest problems with their most comfortable sneakers. Oh, and apparently it is way more comfortable now. So let's figure out if this new Ultra Boost is really what they say it is. Okay, so the box that these things come in is pretty much what you would expect from an Adidas running shoe at this point. Kind of looks like their printer ran out of ink while they were making this. Either way, this is the all new Ultra Boost Lite, which according to Adidas is the lightest Ultra Boost they have ever made and is now the most comfortable. However, judging by the looks of these things, they haven't exactly really invented the wheel here. The Ultra Boost has been around for a long time and is Adidas's flagship sneaker. The Ultra Boost really exploded in popularity with the OG version. It was crowned one of the most comfortable sneakers that you could buy and a go-to for a lot of people who just wanted all day comfort in their pair of shoes. I mean, even though it was created to be a running shoe, people were wearing this sneaker casually, just day to day. Obviously, Adidas saw this and decided to put boost cushioning technology in a whole lot of sneakers, a lot of their lifestyle sneakers as well. It very quickly went from a running cushion system to just overtaking the lifestyle category with the NMDs, a bunch of other models, and of course, pretty much every single Yeezy sneaker. And then of course, Adidas started to release new versions of the Ultra Boost, starting with the Ultra Boost 19. And as soon as that sneaker released, people could very clearly see that Adidas was really trying to make the Ultra Boost a running shoe and keep it in that category. A lot of improvements made on the Ultra Boost 19 in comparison to the OGs were made with runners in mind. And then of course, the Ultra Boost 20 dropped and it had a lot of similarities to the 19s. It was just more refined. In my opinion, I kind of preferred the 19s to the 20s, essentially were just refined versions of the originals. It wasn't until the Ultra Boost 21 when we would see a brand new redesigned sneaker. I mean, everything was changed about the Ultra Boost 21, except for the fundamentals like the knit upper and the boost midsole. And I personally loved this redesign and purchased a pair as soon as they released. I actually still wear the Ultra Boost 21 to this day. And then of course we get to one of the most recent ones, the Ultra Boost 22s, and that seemed like just a refined version of the Ultra Boost 21 just had hardly anything changed up. Pretty much looked identical. And now we are here with not the Ultra Boost 23, it is now called the Ultra Boost Lite. Even though visually it doesn't have too much changed about it, it definitely does separate itself from the Ultra Boost 21 and the 22s. Let's start with the biggest thing about this sneaker, and it's obviously called the Ultra Boost Lite for a reason, and that's because Adidas claims that this is 30% lighter than other Ultra Boost models. So how did they make this sneaker lighter? I mean, boost is boost, right? Well, I'll tell you something, they didn't just add less boost because as you can see, they are very, very similar. If not, the Ultra Boost Lite actually has more boost cushioning in it. The boost cushioning on the Ultra Boost Lite is actually completely different to the previous versions. You can actually see the changes. They've kind of smoothed over the boost cushioning in comparison to the previous versions, which had all of those bumps, kind of looking like styrofoam. However, they've added these lines and very fine dots to the sneaker, and I'm not entirely sure what the function is of those. It almost looks like this midsole is segmented into multiple rectangle pieces and just fused together somehow. Now there is actually a design difference in the midsole of the Ultra Boost Lite when compared to the 21s or the 22s. Overall, the shape looks relatively similar. However, I will say that this one seems to at least appear thicker than the previous version just by a little bit. It also has a groove dug out into the sidewall of this shoe, which I actually kind of like the look of. Now Adidas never actually specified as to how they managed to get this boost cushioning to be lighter. But for comparison, my Ultra Boost 20 weighs 362 grams and the new Ultra Boost Lite weighs 302 grams. Okay, but that's that's not exactly 30% less. So the Ultra Boost 21 being 362 grams, 30% less of that would be like 253. These weigh 302 grams. Okay, maybe my scales are off and on Adidas's website they say that this Ultra Boost Lite is 30% lighter than the previous Ultra Boost model being the Ultra Boost 22. And according to Adidas's website, the Ultra Boost 22 weighs 300 133 grams. Okay, that's worse. Okay, so apparently the Ultra Boost Lite isn't quite the 30% lighter that Adidas is stating, even according to their website. I might be completely missing something here, but I'm not entirely sure why Adidas is saying that this sneaker is 30% lighter than previous Ultra Boost versions. Nevertheless, I will say that all of that doesn't really matter when you actually put these things on feet. Immediately when I put these things on, I felt that weight decrease. I feel way lighter on my feet than the Ultra Boost 21s that I've been wearing. Boost cushioning is known for being pretty pretty heavy and a lot of serious runners tend to opt for lighter options. But the Ultra Boost Lite coming in at 302 grams now puts it in the same bracket as some of its biggest competitors, like the Nike Invincible Run 3. Those are, I think, 310 grams. And as for comfort, they've definitely improved that, at least from the Ultra Boost 21 and 22. We've still got the extremely stretchy knit upper, which is something that I absolutely love about the Ultra Boost model. It is one of the stretchiest knits that you'll find on the market. The knit material is very slightly 
slightly more breathable, at least when compared to the Ultra Boost 21. And according to Adidas, this knit is the same as previous versions in terms of recycled material. 50% of the upper being made from poly ocean plastics and recycled polyester. However, they do have a new name for this knit being Prime Knit Plus Forged, which I'm not entirely sure what they mean by that. It pretty much feels the same as the previous versions as well. They've also added more cushioning to the ankle area, which feels really, really good on foot, especially compared to the Ultra Boost 21, which doesn't have much cushioning at all. Now, the outsole hasn't changed all that much. It still has the Adidas LEP system or linear energy push. Essentially, I believe that's a plastic plate that's stuck on the bottom of the shoe to give you a little bit more of that snappy push off when you're running. I imagine it adds more momentum and a little bit more stability as well. And of course, it still has the continental rubber traction, same as the 21s and the 22s. So it's lighter, it's more comfortable. And in terms of the appearance, well, the Ultra Boost has always been one of my favorite looking running sneakers. I just think that they look so incredibly good, especially when you visually compare it to some of the other running sneakers that are on the market, which some of them look really, really ugly. I actually think visually these look really good. Now, obviously it's not that much of a change up from the 21s or the 22s. With the knit, the cage and the midsole having slight changes from previous versions, I do think these very slightly look a little bit better. It really feels like every single change made to this pair of sneakers only makes it better. Nothing negatively impacts this sneaker at all. Like with previous Ultra Boost versions, sometimes they gave us a bigger boost stack, which was nice on foot, but then they also stiffened up the knit material, which was a lot more uncomfortable. This is just overall an improvement from the previous versions. Not much, not massive improvement from the previous versions, but it's still, it's still an improvement. The brand new Ultra Boost Lite is available now from Adidas through early access if you are a member of their website. However, the full release of all of the different colorways is going to be taking place on March the 2nd. And they retail for a pretty hefty $190 out in the US or 170 pounds here in the UK. So they're, they're not cheap. Overall, I think this is a solid update to the Ultra Boost. I think making it lighter should definitely be the way that Adidas tries to go. Because I think that that's one of the biggest downsides to boost cushioning is the fact that it is so heavy. And I tell you what, walking around in the Ultra Boost Lite feels a lot better than walking around in those heavy Ultra Boost 21. But at the end of the day, the refinements are relatively small. And if you own the 21 or 22, do you need to upgrade? Is this the next sneaker that you need? That's obviously something that you're gonna have to decide and obviously keeping in account that this sneaker is very expensive. But overall, the improvements that they've made to this sneaker is definitely putting it up there as one of the most comfortable sneakers that you can buy. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on the Ultra Boost Lite. What do you think of the new look? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know down in the comment section. Hey, if you're interested in comfortable sneakers, well, check out this video where I try out probably one of the most comfortable sneakers I've ever put on my feet.